And uh, so I decided to investigate whether or not the sun could possibly be affecting the biochemical makeup of the human being. And uh, once I started to dig, and it took me several years, then I, I, I put together a model, which I call the astrogenetic model, in 1986, which explains how the, the sun affects and determines personality. And what's actually happening is, here's a model of the sun, for example, and the sun's, uh, it looks complex at the beginning, but this is the, the, the sun itself. And what I've done is mark the magnetic fields of the sun. For example, we have a magnetic field going through the sun, which we call a polar field, because it goes from the North Pole to the South Pole. Mm -hmm. And there are also four bubbles of magnetism around the equator. We know this from space probes, Marion 2 space probe in 1962. Mm -hmm. And we also know that the sun spins every 28 days to an observer on the Earth. And I'll just describe this motion. I'll take the North Pole off. We can have a look at the magnetic fields of the sun broken down. And what we can see is, if we look at the astrophysical data, the equator of the sun moves every 26 days. And uh, the poles of the sun move every 37 days. Now, the reason for that differential rotation is because the planet Mercury, which orbits the sun very close to the sun, moves more quickly around the sun. It moves 4.1 degrees a day. And what that does is, as Mercury moves, it pulls this magnetism around by 4.1 degrees a day faster than the poles. Mm -hmm. And that means, when you do the sums, if we look at it, that the sun moves every 26 days. But if you're on the Earth, during that 26 days, the Earth moves approximately 26 degrees. So for the, the equator to align back with the Earth, takes 28 days. So an observer on Earth would see the sp sun spin every 28 days. Of course, the North Pole takes longer. That's 30 days on the solar surface and 40 days in relation to the sun. Now, when we analyze what happens with this pole and the equator, and I'll move them, I'll start them off together because it's very, it's fascinating what actually happens. As they start to rotate, this North Pole will go slower and slide through the black field, which I've numbered number one, and we'll see why I've numbered them in a minute. So as they start off rotating together, the equator's moving more quickly, but the pole begins to slide backwards through field number one. And after one month exactly, the North Pole has slid through field number one. And as it slides through, it's like a paddle. It stirs up the magnetic field. Now, what we know from Mariner 2 spacecraft, without the pole, if we didn't have the pole, then what would happen is the sun would shower off seven days negative particles, which would bombard the Earth. Then it would shower off four, uh, seven days positive particles, seven days negative particles, seven days positive particles, every 28 days. But because the pole stirs up, field number one during the first month, mm -hmm. on the Earth we don't see negative particles. What we see is positive particles for seven days, negative for seven days, positive for seven days, and rubbish for seven days. We don't see the negative sector. So over the first month we see two reds and a black. It's more red than it is black. So we say the first month the radiation from the sun is positive. And that positive radiation we can call 2, 3, 4 radiation. During the second month, the pole slides through field number 2. So we don't see field number 2. So the next month, month number 2, we see two negatives and a positive. So in the second month, the sun's radiation is more negative than it is positive. It's 1, 3, 4. During the third month, the equator scans through field number three. So we don't see three, we see one, two, four. And during the fourth month, the pole scans through field number four. So the radiation coming off the sun is one, two, three. That gives us four different codes of radiation, which correspond to earth, air, fire, water. And then it repeats, earth, air, fire, water. And it repeats again, earth, air, fire, water. 
And this is why we have 12 signs of the zodiac. Now, that's a rather detailed explanation, but it has to be if, we, uh, if I'm to keep you on board with what comes later, because later on it gets a bit more complicated. But uh, what we see is the sun showers par particles to the Earth. Those particles affect the Van Allen belts, which are around the Earth and protect the Earth from radiation. But as the particles affect the Van Allen belts of radiation, they go from North Pole to South Pole every one second, and the Earth's magnetic field changes every one second. That magnetic field affects the human brain, and so the 28-day biorhythm cycle affects the pituitary in the brain of humans on Earth, and it's also responsible for the female menstrual cycle every 28 days. So as the sun spins, the particles affect the Van Allen belts, the ma changing magnetic field affects the brain, the brain affects the pituitary, the pituitary affects the production of oestrogen and progesterone, the hormone, uh, the fertility hormones, and that regulates fertility on Earth. So as the sunspot cycle changes over thousands of years, fertility on Earth changes over thousands of years.